Good morning, everybody. This is Lisa's Coloring Corner, and this is part three of my little mini-series of all my coloring supplies. I did have a request from a few of your subscribers to show all of my coloring supplies, so I thought I would break them up into three different parts, pencils, markers, and miscellaneous. So, in this miscellaneous category, of course, I have my glitter gel pens, and no, I am not going to show all of the glitter gel pens that I have. Um, I'm just going to show a few of them of my favorites. The first one is Color Technique. I love this set. Um, they have a smaller set. This is a set of 80. I will link... Um, everything that I'm showing you when I can, if they're all available on Amazon. I know these are. Um, the Color Technique gel pens, and you can get refills for these. I have used quite a few of the refills because I use these quite a bit. So that is the Color Technique gel pens. I have since found a new favorite thanks to Donna from Color with Donna. She was gifted some Chromatech glitter gel pens. This is the set of 50 and then they do also come in a set of 30. What is so nice about these glitter gel pens, you can purchase refills um, and each pack does come with a set of refills because I like them so much, I ordered extra refills. <laughs> um, but not only do they color awesome and very nice and smooth, but look at this. And I did do a review of these uh, gel pens. You can go and look in my videos. Um, these gel pens have a number on the barrel, a letter and a number. Um, and like this one is G15, and you can actually read the code. It is in white lettering. And then the refills themselves, I think I have this one open, maybe not. No, I don't. well, it's open on the bottom. The refills themselves correspond, of course, to the what's on the barrel. But again, you can actually read the code. So again, I don't know if you can see that, but there is a code in gold lettering. So you can and a number, so you can actually match up your refill to your gel pen very, very easily. The color technique and all of the other glitter gel pens, there is a code for the most part on them, but it's just embedded in the plastic, so it's clear. You cannot read them. <laughs> Even if you turn them and try to get them in the right lighting, you may be able to pick up a little bit of it, but it's pretty impossible to read. So, with Chromatech coming out with these um, that you can actually read and they actually color very smoothly, like I said, this is a new favorite. And Donna kind of found out something really interesting. These colors and how they color and just the design of them very closely resemble the Color It gel pens, and we kind of think they are made by the same manufacturer. These are much cheaper, however, than the Color It gel pens, and I am going to be showing you those next. Again, like my other Color It supplies, I got these in a really good bundle deal the end of last year when Color It was holding their, or was having their 12 days of Christmas deals. Um, they have a glitter gel pen set and they do come like most of Color It supplies. They come in these nice cases. And 
they all do have a name and a number on them. So that is really nice. Like this one is Glitter Honey Pot. They all have really cute names. And then the alphanumeric code. So then, of course, your refills will correspond to this. And again, you can read them very easily. So very similar to the Chromatech. So I do have a color chart. I do not make color charts for the vast majority of my gel pens because I just go through them too fast. <laughs> and there's typically no name or anything on them. However, the color it glitter gel pens and then the uh, miscellaneous um, gel pens do all have names and numbers on them. Here is the rest of the glitter gel pens and these are different than what you get in the glitter gel pen set itself. So when you combine these with these you get the best of both worlds because in this set there's not a good orange, there's not a good red, but yet you get them down in here. So to have both sets is awesome. Then they have metallic, pastels, and neons. So they are very good gel pens. There is no doubt about that. Here is the various set. Again, comes in this nice case. And here are the rest of your glitters. Then the neons, the pastels, and, not the neons, the metallics the pastels, and the neons. So those are the Color It gel pens, and then, yes, you can get refills for them. Here is the glitter set. Here is the combination set, if you want to call it that. Um, so yes, you can get refills for their glitter gel pens also. All right, so that is all I'm going to show you of my gazillion uh, glitter gel pens. For the most part, I don't keep any other type of gel pens anymore because I just don't color with them. I only color with the glitter gel pens. I have a bunch of packs in my filing cabinet, um, and some of them I may use for future giveaways also. Then next is the Spectrum Noir Sparkle Pens. These are so pretty. Let me get these color charts out of the way. Okay, and I have them in this really pretty lavender sparkly case. I love this case. Now these are the Spectrum Noir which you can see has a lot of really pretty colors. And I also put the Zig Winko Stella in the same case. Okay, so let's look at these. The Spectrum Noir, ooh, sorry for that sound. The Spectrum Noir has a ton more colors, as you can see. This one, like the other case that I showed you, opens up on the sides. So then this opens completely and you can see all of your pens. These you, well, you don't really have to shake these. This you just push here in order to get the ink out. Has this long brush tip and it is very glittery color on my finger. Can't really see it on my finger, but they are very, very glittery. Now, the big difference that I noticed between the Spectrum Noir glitter pens and the Zigs is these Zigs are, they're very glittery too, but they have more of a gold type of glitter in them. And they are a much finer brush tip than the Spectrum Noir. And the Spectrum Noir actually has a silver type of glitter in them. And I actually, you know, prefer the silver glitter. But if you want a warmer looking type of glitter, then the um, Winkostella is really good for that. 
So I have both sets in here. So that is all of the glitter gel pens, brush tip markers that I have. Then we have the Zig Clean Color Real Brush Pens. Again, gorgeous, gorgeous colors in here. We're getting into all of the watercolor things that I have. Have them in this case because, of course, I have to have everything in cases. Here comes that sound again. Phew! Okay, and here is the complete set. What, oh, I can't remember what channel, what YouTube channel um, said to do this, and it worked out really great. The tips of these um, brush pens does not have a color on them. So what she suggested, and what I thought was a fabulous idea, you color this on a sheet of paper. I colored it on cardstock. Then I took a hole punch and I punched out the color and I glued it to the tip. So I know what the actual color is that, you know, this pen it mark makes. Does that make sense? Um, and these do have a color name and that's why I could make a color chart. So there is a color name on each marker pen. So these are water-based. They're soluble with the um, water brushes or paint brushes, whichever you prefer. Then I have the Arteza Real Brush Pens. Beautiful colors in here. They have lots of purples, yay. Okay, and I did buy the Arteza case that was specially made for their brush pens because you know me in cases <laughs> This is a really nice nice case it has these clips these plastic clips in the front And then velcro <laughs> Has some loops up here for like a, a water brush if you would want to keep a water brush in here again the sides do open so that the case completely opens does not have color on the top so I think I'm going to do the same thing with these what I did with these zigs um, and it does have a colored number and a uh, color name on each of the pens has a longer tip than the zigs do um, and I have not played much with these, but again, they are water soluble with a paint pen or with a water pen, water brush pen, water brush. Oh, I'm not thinking straight this morning yet. Okay, so that is the Arteza real brush pens. Then another water soluble is the Color It watercolor brush pens. And again, I got this in that great deal, that bundle. And they have some really pretty colors in this also. Again, all Color It supplies come in their own cases, really nice cases. And these have a little bit, they have a clip on them. And uh, they, these are refillable, which is what's one nice thing about the Color It um, watercolor brush pens. And you just open up the end down here. You put in your refill ink. And then you just screw that back on. It has a nice brush tip little bit finer smaller than the other ones which I like and they do have a number and a color name so yes the big advantage of these it's not as big of a set as some of the others but they are refillable and you can buy the refills right on their site I believe they are also available on Amazon if I'm not mistaken so that is the watercolor or the color it watercolor brush pens. Then the last watercolor uh, supply that I have 
product, I should say, is the Caran d'Ache Neocolor 2s. I want to get into using these more. They are awesome. Um, I just colored this in and brought out with the water so I could see what the true color is and then what it would look like as I brought the water out. And they are so pretty. They are, they dissolve with water. Just awesome. They come in this tin. And again, this is one of the very few supplies that I keep in the container that they come in that they came in there is 84 in here now keep in mind these are the neo color twos not the neo color ones um, i know some people in the past accidentally ordered the ones and those are the waxy crayons that are not water soluble you have to get the neo color twos that are water soluble the thing that's really nice, Karen Dosh products are second to none, um, and that's why they're so pricey. But these are just gorgeous. They do have a color name on each, hence the color chart. Um, these can be sharpened. Um, some people don't like to because they feel they're wasting the product of these expensive things. I have sharpened mine already. Um, but due to the quality of these, they come in these nice, not those flimsy plastic uh, layers like we're used to seeing with our pencils. They come in these really nice heavy-duty metal trays. So then it, it does get... Um, a covering on each layer with this, what would you call it, this foam um, piece, this foam sheet. And then here is the second layer. And again, this, the second layer stays right down in the case. There is not, you know, something to pull them out with. Lots and lots of greens and earth tones. Um, so yeah, I really want to get these out and play with them more. I have done a couple of pictures with them and they are just awesome. Whoops, didn't put it down in the second layer. I like to do that just to protect them and that's why I didn't put them in a separate case like a pencil case because they are so soft. I figured I would mark up not only the pencil case but waste some of the product and possibly break them so neo color twos then um the next thing that i am going to show you is all my pan pastels and yes i did go through and i made a color chart for the pan pastels I did not um, put in the extra dark. I just got the last set saved up for them for a long time, and I did finally get the set completed. So I have to go back and um, color this in. I do have a um, workable fixative on here, so these don't smear. Once I get this in, I'm going to put a permanent fixative on the sheets. But look at these gorgeous colors. If you're not familiar with Pan Pastels, each color comes in four different hues. So you have your tints, which um, tints are mixed with white. Shades are mixed with gray. Um, so these are all basically your, your, pa your Pan Pastels, your pastel colors. Then you have your pure color. Then you have a little bit darker of a shade in the shade, how appropriate, uh, column. Then you have your extra darks, and they get very, very dark and are used in the, the coloring um, to, to do your um, super dark shading. Here are all the blues and greens. Again, I have to fill this all in yet. Here are all the grays, browns. Then there are some metallics, and I do have that set. This was my very first set of Pan Pastels, and they are the pearlescent colors, and they are gorgeous. 
Um, I use these a lot for my backgrounds with a stencil. And when I do a video on working with pan pastels um, for backgrounds and whatnot, I'm going to show how I use the stencil and um, use that. Then they do have some different type of mediums. Um, this is the white and the black that does come in some of the sets, but then the mediums that um, come in handy also, and I think I only have one of these, is the pearl mediums in white, and there's a fine and a coarse. Then there is a pearl medium in black that is a fine and a coarse, and they work with blending your pan pastels out. And there is a colorless blender, which works awesome to blend out the pastels. And I know I'm not zoomed in too far, so it's really hard probably to see this. I just kind of wanted to, to show you some of the colors that are available in the entire pan pastel collection. So let's go ahead and look at these. I did buy these storage trays. You can buy them in a 10, I think there's a six set too, or the 10, or I opted to get the 20 because I knew I was going to eventually get the entire set of pan pastels. So I have them upside down. <laughs> so here is the yellows. Again, starting with the tints, the true color, the shade, and then the extra dark. And then we go into the lighter, um, not the lighter, into the next colors, the lightest being up at the top. This is how I arranged them anyhow, because I wanted each color family to stay together. So that is through the reds. Then we get into the purples and blues. I just love the tints. I think they're so pretty. Then we get into the greens. One of the browns is in here, which works great for skin tones. And these can be used for skin tones also. Then we get into all of the grays, and they do have a lot of grays, just like some of our pencil and marker sets. And then here are the beautiful metallics, and they really shimmer on paper, as do the iridescent set. Really, really, oh, it's these here six are the iridescent sets. And then these are the different mediums. I guess I do have a few more than what I thought. I think I have the fine, uh, the white fine and coarse, and then I think I have the black fine and then um, the titanium white and the colorless blender is down here. I do have, I don't know why, when I got the last set of pan pastels, I was thinking I was going to then need <laughs> another palette tray um, because it was another set of 20. Dummy, 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 because of course they all went in these trays. So I have an extra palette tray <laughs> that I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with at this point. But I do want to start working with these on camera. We are going to do some backgrounds with them and then this scares the heck out of me, but we are going to start trying to color with these on camera so of course the first few times i do that it's probably going to be an epic fail but we'll fail together i guess <clears throat> now with the pan pastels i have a lot of the sponges and supplies that you can get with the pan pastels or i should say for the pan pastels many of the sets that you get will come with a supply of these sponges and these are called soft sponges, S-O-F-F-T. These work the best with your pan pastels. You can use makeup sponges or something like that, but the makeup sponge is going to, 
I don't want to say soak up your pan pastels, but the the pastel itself is going to go into the sponge much more, and you're going to be wasting a lot of your product. Um, and with these, it stays on top, and they blend wonderfully. So these soft sponges, yes, are more expensive than your cheap little makeup sponges, but this is what they were made for, and that's why they work so good. So let's take a little look-see into my container here where I keep all of my supplies. I do have some spare pan pastels down in here. Again, maybe included in a future giveaway. This is a large uh, sponge I was using an, as a blending palette when I was attempting <laughs> to do a face. <sighs> Didn't turn out real well. Um, some of your blending tools. Um, this one is the one that I really like, and you can buy sponge or you can buy replacements for this tip, as well as these. Now you can see you get a lot of these with your uh, sets that you buy. That's why I have so many down there. And what I have in here are the tips to all of those blue things that I just showed you. I do have some of my bigger sponges. This is just a pencil case, and then I picked up these little cases from Walmart. I do have some of my bigger sponges in here. Then I have all of the little tips that you get with a lot of your sets. Um, keep them all in there. And then that little pencil thing that I told you you can get extra tips for. Um, look like this and you just pull the old one out you pinch this together and put the new sponge in so you can order extra ones of that too and like I said that that one is my favorite out of all of these different types of tips you can really color nicely with those so that is my pan pastel collection now, last but not least, I have the Ranger Distress Ink. Um, yes, I made a color chart for these two. <laughs> of course, they do each have a color name. So that's why I had to make my color chart. If you have ever watched Karen, uh, her uh, YouTube channel name is Zucchini Kitty. She just does amazing things with these Distress Inks in coloring books. It is just, it's incredible. Um, so maybe go check her out. These are all the sets that I have. You can buy these little cases, these little metal tins that you can put them in. They fit in here just perfect. Now I just have the little uh, sets, the little what would you call them? Um, you know what I mean. Um, but they do come in bigger squares too. Um, I figure for what I'm doing, I just needed uh, the little ones. So there is your sponge that uh, has the ink in it. And then you get a tool with your sets. This is the round tool. And I followed somebody's advice and I put I have a sponge in the bottom of each one of these so I have a sponge for each color you just stick that on there it's velcroed when you're done you just take it back off and you keep that sponge with that particular color and it just stays in the bottom really nice so that was a very good suggestion from the person that <laughs> I heard this from. Okay, so these, this is one tray. Let's close it back up. Then we have all of the greens, those were blues. We have a bunch of yellows and oranges. Pinks and reds, um, some purples in here. And then we do have a lot of browns and possibly some skin tones in this last set. So I have five tins. They do, these small ones come in packs of four. 
This is an extra set that I have. And again, this may be a future giveaway. Um, these are, like I said, extras that I do not need. These are duplicates of what I have, but they do come in these four packs. These are by uh, Tim Holtz. Uh, they're Ranger inks. And uh, yes, these are the mini ink pads. That's what I was trying to think of. And then, like I said, you do have the bigger ink pads in this same, uh, the same colors. You can also get this type of applicator. It is a larger rectangular type of applicator. And you can buy all these sponges separate too. So I bought this thinking I could use them for larger areas to fill in. And then if you have your ink pads dry out, especially if you know the ink itself hasn't been all used up, you can get this Distress Refresher, it's called, and you just spray it on here and it will reactivate the color in there. Um, so I wanted to get this because I knew I wasn't going to be using these on a daily basis and some may get dry. So I did want um, some of the Distress Refresher. All right, I think that is it. I did make this color chart with a cute little stamp that I picked up and I knew was going to fit in this square um, when I created this color chart. And so, yeah, I just took this cute little paw print stamp and um, just took each color, wiped it off, and then made my color chart. So I know what color each one is. So that is all of my miscellaneous supplies. Again, I was not about to go and get out all of my miscellaneous supplies like pencil sharpeners and blender markers and pencils and um, you know, all my black ink pens, uh, markers, white, you name it. I have a bunch of things in my cabinets over in the other room. And yeah, it would have just taken forever in a year. I have a bunch of stencils and things like that. And I will get some of that out in future videos. But I did not want to get them out on this video. It's already half an hour. And yeah, if I did that, it would be extremely long. Plus the fact I don't feel like carrying that all in here. <laughs> I've had to carry a lot of stuff in here and, and put back for this set of uh, three videos already. So didn't want to uh, do that in addition. So I hope you enjoyed seeing some of these supplies. Uh, again, I do hope to use a lot of this in future videos. I have a lot of plans for some future videos yet, which is good. I'm not running out of ideas. Plus, I do get questions from some of you viewers. You know, could I show this? Could I do a flip through of this? And I'm more than happy to do that. So if anybody has a suggestion or a question um, and would like me to do a video on that, just let me know down in the comments or else my email is down in the description and you can um, email me also. So if you liked this video, please give me that thumbs up. And if you are new to my channel, please consider subscribing and hit that bell so you are notified of any future videos. I hope everybody is having a terrific day on this Friday. And as always, happy coloring. <laughs>